I apologize for that if you heard that, uh, guys. There's this really weird thing now. When I press record, there is a random woman who says recording in progress and the same thing except recording has stopped um, when I stop. So I apologize. I'm still trying to get to the bottom of it. It's been annoying me for the last half an hour, but I can't seem to get to a solution. But anyway, just going to have to deal with that one. Um, but anyway, yeah, so in today's video, we're going to be talking about a very, very powerful technique, a very, very powerful thing that you can use to improve the probability, the odds, the chances of winning um, of the levels that you pick, you know, whether you use supply and demand, you use another type of level, whatever you use, understanding this uh, is going to really, really help you. And I'm going to explain why it works in relation to how larger flows of money, uh, namely institutions, all the different types of institutions, um, how their orders and them bring orders into the market can affect this. Uh, so you don't just understand what you're doing, you also understand why it is working for you as well. So if you're interested in that, then I highly recommend sticking around to the end of the video. I won't make it too long. I will make it as short and concise as possible. But first of all, if you're new here, I'd appreciate you liking this video if you do enjoy. And if you want to see more content like this, uh, please consider subscribing to the channel. But without further ado, let's just get straight into it. So Essentially, the long and short of it is when most of us are looking to trade any kind of level, horizontal level of some sort or another, this level had to have started somewhere, okay? It had to have started somewhere. It will be start on the left somewhere, and we are drawing our opinions based off of this. This is the whole premise of technical analysis as a whole. Now, if we are expecting price to leave a certain level, let's say it's created it here, we leave and we begin coming back. In order for us to anticipate that this is a level worth trading off of, we are working off the principle that there are either two things. There's either existing pending orders there waiting to um, get filled, or there are going to be people who once prices at that level who are going to be manually entering in. But the long and short of it is we're expecting orders, whether pending or market orders, to be at one of these levels or at least to come in at one of these levels. OK, and so it's very, very important that we understand this because in this next trick, the whole point of this video, the purpose of this video, um, we are going to be in increasing the chances of there being orders there, okay, which is great, which is essentially what all levels in technical analysis are essentially based off of, okay. So in order for us to understand this, we need to, first of all, understand some basics about liquidity and how liquidity moves. Let me just get rid of this over here, okay. So if we go over here like such, like this, okay, say so we've got this very obvious level right here come down here, you've got to understand that unlike us, you and I, retail traders, where we can buy and sell wherever we want, we can buy, you know, here, 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 sell, buy, you know, wherever the hell we want, because our orders are very, very small in relation to the overall scope and the structure of the market. However, when you get into the institutional area, you can't just buy and sell anywhere because the amount, the size of your orders are going to limit where you can buy and sell. OK, so what I mean by this is in a two basic sentences, if an institution or a larger flow of money needs to buy, OK, a buyer, not plus, oh, done that again. So a buyer needs sellers to buy from. OK, in the same way as if you went to a supermarket, OK, you are not going to be able to go in there and buy something that isn't being offered, that isn't being sold. You can't go up to, you know, the store owner and be like, I want your shirt. How much for your shirt? You know, I mean, maybe in some places you can, but I'm pretty sure that for the vast majority of places, you can't do that. Essentially, it's basic supply and demand. You can't buy something if no one is willing to sell it. OK, on the flip side, if they want to become a seller, they need, you guessed it, buyers to sell to. Again, you can't sell something if nobody is willing to buy it. This is the same thing with, you know, um, you know, especially those, you know, crazy bull runs and stuff like this, probably a good example, things like cryptocurrency and stuff like that. If someone was to ride it out until, you know, the bitter end, loads of people have been offsetting and then price begins going down and everybody's kind of dropping it really, really quickly. If you've got a huge, huge, huge holding, a huge position, it's going to be very, very difficult for you to sell it off because there aren't going to be many buyers in the market. No one's really going to be buying it as, you know, the market transitions to a bear, uh, bear market. And so people can get trapped in this way. Uh, 
um, and that is kind of the uh, the very very simple variation at least of uh, of a bubble okay and so with this understanding okay and this basic understanding of how retail traders are taught okay buy at support you know sell at resistance blah 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 what do we think most people are going to be doing here well more than likely they're going to be buying right okay now if we know that most people are going to be buying here what does that mean that there are going to be a reduced amount of in the market and it means that there's going to be a reduced amount of sellers now if okay now remember if we are predisposed to go up now this is a very important point and not something i'm going to necessarily talk about right here but if we are predisposed to go up meaning we are more than likely to go up rather than down okay because this on its own won't provide you any directional bias at least not for more than a scalp and remember a scalp can be relative to the time frame but that is a video for a whole separate time let me know if you want to see that in the description box description in the comment section below okay but if we know everybody's buying here then and we're predisposed to go up then the, the market makers, they can't buy at this point, okay? And so what do they do? They push price lower, they accumulate positions. How do they accumulate positions here? Because there are going to be two types of traders at this point. It's going to be traders who have been trading here with their stops below the level like this. And they're also going to be the second batch of traders with their breakout positions down here. Now, regardless of whether this stop loss of this position right here gets hit, this position right here, or if the entry is hit here, it's the same thing. It is a sell stop order, okay? Because when you are stopped out here, the only difference between these two trades is that when you get stopped out here, you don't see that in your account. That is on the broker's side, okay? Whereas over here, okay, if you place that sell, um, that sell stop there, then you do see that on your side, but you're taken out. They're, they're both the same thing. Okay. And so if we think about that word, those two words that I just said, sell stop. Okay. And we think about it in relation to what I've just mentioned over here. What do you think that means? Well, it means that after price comes down to these points, okay, what is there going to be more of in the market? There's going to be more sellers. And like I said, if we're predisposed to go up, we're not always predisposed to go up. Then what does that mean? Well, it means if we're predisposed to go up and we've now got an influx of sellers in, this is going to be the ideal time to buy. Okay. And so what happens in this case? Price continues going up. All those breakout traders caught on the wrong side, people seeing it as break of structure, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Now, this by itself is not actually what I want to talk to you about today. In fact, well, I mean, it is, but it's not um, the traditional thing. I'm not saying to buy anything down here. And remember, you know, anything that I talk about on this channel, anything you hear from any channel, you must always make sure you go and back test it thoroughly. And by thoroughly, I mean 200, 300, 400 times reviewing every 100 trades, tweaking one thing like a scientist. Okay. When I say try it, and that's what I mean. Okay. You've got to go and test these things yourself because, you know, it's all very well and good explaining on YouTube videos, but unless you can do it from experience, unless you understand what you're looking for, it's completely pointless. Okay. So, anyway, lecture over. So, the basis for what I want to show you now is I want to just picture, point something out to you. Okay, so if we see a big break of overall structure down here, and then we return to these sorts of levels down here. Okay, so I'm just going to draw a rough kind of zone over here. Okay, so based on the understanding so far that we know, based on how we've just marked things up that people would have been caught on the wrong side here obviously there is an element of people always getting caught on the wrong side in some form or another but people are getting caught on the wrong side of the market here um and uh you, you know that that's very very obvious from what's happened here followed con and confirmed by this big break of structure up here now when we return down here bring it back to what we said at the beginning any level zone anything it works off the premise that we are looking and trying to find those areas where orders are going to be resting or where orders are likely to be coming in. Remember, it's never guaranteed. It's just a game of probability. But if we can, you know, slightly weigh those, you know, stack those odds in our favor, that's just only going to help with psychological challenges and whatnot that come with trading naturally. Okay. And so if we've seen this here and then we return back down to this level, what does this make this level? This makes this level an incredibly highly likely place that things are going to change. OK, and I'm going to explain to you why I prefer this as a setup rather than this, because right here on the left, that when we first had this formed, even if we had an idea, even if we were like, right, OK, it's predisposed to go higher, we still can't ever guarantee that something could change. OK, and so with that understanding okay very very simple understanding 
if we were to just buy it down here or buy it when it comes back up here, there's still always that chance that it's going to come back. And I'm not saying there's not a chance that this won't come back and blah, 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 blah. But I've found this to just be an extremely powerful way because you are waiting for that extra confluence. OK, and so here price could eventually come back down. But then we get the confirmation of seeing the confirmation that orders have been stacked here. Because remember, it's possible if price came back down to this point, it came back up here and then just continue going down again. OK, and that wouldn't be very valuable to us, like I said, unless we're scalping and scalping is relative to the time frame. OK, and so we see this confirmation here. And then when we come back down here, we've got a bit of a bigger, a bit more of an in-depth picture of what is going on. And then this can be an area that, uh, that we potentially um, could look for something. OK, now. You may be looking at this right here and thinking this is. Um, similar to Wyckoff, you know, I know a lot of people are obsessed with Wyckoff now. It's like, oh, Wyckoff, Wyckoff, Wyckoff. And, you know, that's that's fine. You know, whatever, each to their own, I suppose. I hate drawing the whole schematic. I think it's a complete waste of time. Um, but nevertheless, I think there are some very important lessons that Wyckoff does teach you. Um, nevertheless. OK, so right here, all we're seeing basically is a very, very simplified version of the accumulation uh, schematic. Essentially, we're seeing manipulation of lows in order to accumulate long positions. OK, this is the fundamental, um, you know, very, like I said, simplified understanding of Wyckoff. OK, and so in the same way here, when we come down for this second, I don't know what this is called, actually, but it's called something. I'm sure if you know Wyckoff, feel free to put that in the comments below. You know, these things will have uh, a, a name. But essentially, this is what you're doing here. This is the same thing here. The only difference between this and this is this is a lot easier to see, in my opinion. And a lot of people confuse themselves with Wyckoff. And, you know, in my opinion, Wyckoff isn't something that beginners should focus on anyway, uh, because it kind of makes the focus all about entries and entries is, you know, is, is a refinement process. It's like tweaking an existing working process. But if you don't have that core framework, that core structure to work around, then you're going to suffer immensely. OK, and so that's a topic for another video entirely. Um, but uh, the main kind of point of this, OK, is when we see a manipulation of lows like this, then it's confirmed by an overall break of structure up here. OK, then we return down here. And based on the fact that we all technical analysis when we're trading any kind of level zone, whatever, is based off the premise of we want orders to be there because we want to move with those orders or come in with those orders so that we can create the best opportunities. If we understand that and we understand all of these different factors, what have we done for ourselves? We have given ourselves, we've given ourselves a formula, a framework to improve um, and to, to really get um, things going. Now, an example of this, okay, you know, just one that I can see right here, for example, is we have these very, very obvious levels right here. We violate that to the downside. People would have been selling here, influx of sellers. When this candle was open, at this point here, that is a big, big drop. And most people, you know, would be getting involved around there. OK, now, again, it's possible to use this here and potentially trade this up here. However, in my opinion, it's more risky. And, you know, because look, just look at this. If you don't know what you're doing here, you can you know, really get on the wrong side. You've got about a 33 pip um, thing down here. Now, this is actually not a problem. 33 pips is not a problem. But I know a lot of people, a lot of beginners nowadays are just absolutely obsessed with sniper entries because they've been brainwashed by social media and whatnot. Um, and so I'm not going to try and argue with those people in this video, but I've got other videos where I take them on head on i suppose you could say um and uh, yeah I'll, I'll leave that video to do that job but instead of that we let it we let it play out we see that it breaks the overall structure down here now it's kind of coming back down into these sorts of areas down here specifically it's coming down into this demand zone right here now depending on how you draw them i normally first draw it from the body just something like that and we can see we have had a small reaction up here um but it's unlikely that we've seen the full reaction obviously we have been moving down for a while um and you know my particular style number one is mainly high Higher time frame now um but you know this for example if we imagine this was on the daily or whatever this range right here would be plenty for me to play with okay and so if we look at this this would have been about a 40 pip range and look guys i know this is hindsight okay i'm not saying that this is the perfect way or this is something i definitely would have taken this is just an example of what this can look like and remember time is fractal to a um a certain degree obviously it moves within the higher time frames but it is fractal to a certain uh, degree so it is something to uh, to definitely be aware of 
And then if you're looking for that high probability area for it to go in this case, if you're working between the two hour and the one hour, then something like this would be nice. Okay, why here? Because even though this only looks like a wick here and a wick up here, if we were to go down time frames, this would be a potential area things could change. And if you have a strong understanding that anything could change at any level in the markets, no matter how significant or insignificant, and you find that in with your with how you mark up and how you understand things, then it's going to become very, very clear to you that, you know, being aware of these levels is going to massively help with managing risk. And that's ultimately what it's all about. Okay. It's more about managing risk than it is about trying to get a risk reward or this or this or this. As I've improved, as I've gotten better, as I've kind of grown as a trader, everything has just become about managing risk, preserving capital rather than trying to like maximize gains and go down all of this crazy, um, all this kind of crazy stuff. Okay. And again, that's not saying that price couldn't go further, but remember, guys, the purpose of this video, okay, is just to explain this concept i've got plenty of other videos covering a wide range of topics i like to keep these videos fairly short for you so that you can just take a bit of bite-sized knowledge and then go to another video that covers a more specific topic i don't like making videos where it's all just this one elongated i talk about everything in one video you know it's just incredibly time consuming for you and it's la it's not very productive you know most people's attention spans are lower but I'm realizing that I'm ranting here. So I'm just going to kind of cut this short here and say, if you really enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate you leaving a like on this video. Comment if you've got any questions whatsoever, or if you just want to have a go at me and, you know, blah, 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 then feel free to have a go at me in the comments or whatever. Um, I appreciate uh, all of you nonetheless. And until next time, guys, take it easy. If you want to take your trading to the next level uh, and really focus on those elements of trading that not everybody talks about strategy, you know, self-review, how do you monitor your progress? How do you know whether you're making progress or not? You know, how do you monitor so those stats, how do you know when to change something, when not to change something, overcome those psychological challenges, fear of missing out, all of this sort of stuff that nobody really talks about, then I highly recommend going and checking out the links in the description. I've got a new video explainer um, page down there that goes into a lot more depth about why most traders fail and all of that sort of stuff, if you're interested. But until next time, guys, take it easy. I love each and every single one of you. Um, and I wish you a very, very good week of trading.